by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and great millstones, peace, blessings, honors to all the brothers. And it's truth. This is the brother Kadash. You know, and I'm um I stumble over this documentary about the um ancient Aztecs Empire, you know, which are you know, a Mexican empire which we know they're they're Israelites. So this is just more proof there they're Israelites. Some key things that I caught you know in here you know that kind of raised you know you know my eyebrows a little bit to say oh you know that's that's some interesting facts so i wanted to share with the akium because this is only for the elect man You hear that? What drove these people like the Israelites from the Bible? I mean, there's so many similarities with them and the Israelites of the Bible. You know, that's the, I mean, there's hundreds, I mean, there's thousands of different religions and different groups of people that he could have said that he could have compared them to. But the one that's, that, that he most wanted to compare them to was the Israelites of the Bible. You know, they, they saw themselves as a chosen people. No, nah, they saw theyself um like these Christians say or these Catholics, you know, these dudes that say they in the truth but anybody and everybody could be saved. No, nah, they saw themselves even to everybody. No, nah, they saw themselves as a chosen people. Why? Because they are a chosen people. And they were looking for their homeland. But you gotta understand though, if they're already here on the land of America, which is Central uh, Mexico, Central America, which is Mexico. If they were looking for their chosen land, then they knew that the land that they were on was not their actual land, was not their chosen land, which is a cut to those brothers that, uh, a small cut to those brothers that say, oh, no, America, Israel, Is Israel was in America, uh, um, Egypt was in America. That's a cut, man, because even they knew, okay, this is America, this is a great land. You know, they built an empire on this land, but at the same time, they knew that this wasn't their chosen land. Because where is their chosen land? It's over there in the um, so-called Middle East. It's Israel, Jerusalem. That's their chosen land, man. They knew that. You see his garment? If you could look down, you know, kind of towards his knee area, you see, see the garment hanging down there. And they got fringes going around it, man. And it looks like that's a border of blue around it. Look at his fringes flapping. Isn't that a um isn't that a commandment to wear our fringes? You know, people don't just wake up one day and say, I'm gonna put fringes on. Oh, that's a good design. No, oh, man. That was their heritage. According to Aztec look, legends, look at their fringes. the command to set forth came from their tribal deity. Quitzilopochtli, the god of the sun and god of war. As the tribe wandered, the high priests carried an effigy of Quitzilopochtli with them. I'm going to keep chiming in because, you know, um, I'm just trying to point out the facts that I've seen. But, you know, they had a god, you know, which which could which could be them, you know, um, Yahweh Shai. Pretty much they could be predicting that their god to be Yahweh Shai. They were going off, you know, but that's prophecy in the Bible that they that they came to this land and they start going off. But the thing is, it's like a god of war, a god of the sun, god of war. Well, we know Yahweh Shai inherit everything from Yahweh and they they together are the god of hosts, you know. The god of hosts which mean that a god of army, which which goes back to being a god of war, you know, at the same time. So, I'm going to let a little bit more play. And then you see how they had a high priest. You know, where else do you hear about, you know, people having a high priest? Well, when you go back to the book of Exodus, and when you go back to Moses and Aaron, they set up the high priest, you know, the temples and stuff like that. And these Aztecs had temples. They were into sacrifice, even though they were going off sacrificing people, but they knew that there was a thing where you get a temple, you get an altar, and you sacrifice to the to their god. When their god spoke, they obeyed. Right. Commandments. 
But how did he communicate with them? That looked like he inside a chariot, man. Uh, supposedly this image actually spoke to them in their language, uh, but spoke through the medium of the priest. And then the What was their language? Spoke through the media of the priest? That goes back to Israel. You know, because they were scared to speak to the Lord directly. So they wanted Moses to go up there and speak, and then Moses come down and tell them, tell them what the Lord said. And same thing with when they set up the priesthood. The priest would, would um, if there was a matter, and you have to go to the priest to figure out, you know, to get a judgment, you know, the priest would pray to the Lord, and they would speak to the Lord, they would come down with a judgment, you know, on, on certain things that, that were, you know, and, and the same thing with going to war and stuff like that. They would pray, you know, they would go to the priest, the priest would pray like with Samuel. You know, they would have to pray to the Lord, you know, to get answers. Priests would transmit this message, and the original message was, now you must leave Aslan, you must migrate to the south, but and you must obey my commands, but I promise you this great destiny. Uh, I promise you the world. Right. The Aztecs felt that they were the people destined to maintain the cosmos and to see that the sun would have enough energy to fight its way across the sky and that the earth had enough nutrition to bear the crops. And they felt that they could only do this by making offerings and mostly blood offerings. Which they were going off by offering people, but even at the same time, they knew that it was something about offering to the Lord. Where did they get that from? Well, or when our people were all together in the wilderness. That's where we got that from. And we started um, offering, you know, goats and rams and stuff like that, lambs and stuff like that to the Lord. Issachar had a special a special gift with being able to look up into the heavens, being able to tell time, being able to um, tell you, you know, um, when the Sabbath was coming in, you know, being able to navigate using the stars and stuff like that. Because when you think about it, Google the Aztec calendar, you know. And even before that, you got the Mayan calendar, which they're, they're Israelites too, you know. You got these these complex calendar, calendars that has that matches up with the heavens, matches up with the lights in the heavens, the stars and stuff like that. That was a gift that was given to them. When King Solomon, um, I ain't even got my Bible on me right now, I just got my apocrypher. But when King Solomon, because I will pull it, but when King Solomon um, was going to go to war, and stuff like that. He had different tribes set up to do different things. And one of and one of the things that um Issachar, the the Israelite tribe Issachar, which are the um so called Mexicans, which are the Aztecs, they were um set up to um you know look into the skies and get signs from the skies, the stars, the heavens, to tell them when to move and when not to move and stuff like that, man. According to Aztec belief, the human heart was the most precious gift which mere mortals could offer to the gods. And they start going off, and we're going to go back through that here. Let me skip up a little bit more. You know what? The way you care for your... Play. Look at that. The is uh, Scholars Israelite have king. Been mystified. He decked out, After man. He got so fringes going around his whole... Cortez. Hold on, man. He got fringes going around his whole um, garment, man. He decked out. That's that's an Israelite theme, and that's a Jake theme. You know, you look at the kings here in America, Russia, China. You would never, if you didn't know who these people were, and you walked across the street of them, you would never know they were kings. Cause they weak, man. They wearing suits that everybody else is wearing. You know the same stuff everybody else is wearing. You gonna you gonna know the king, cause the king going. Gonna stand apart for everybody else. He's gonna be decked out, man. Just like when we get to the kingdom, man, we're not gonna be wearing suits and, and, and lame stuff like that, man. We're gonna be decked out with gold, precious stones, man. Let me play. Mochikazoma welcomed him as the returning god Quetzalcoatl. Oh, our lord, thou hast come to arrive on earth. Thou hast come to govern the city of Mexico. The ancient rulers departed saying that thou wouldst come. Now it hath been fulfilled. For the Kazuma the second. He went off. But the Kazuma invited the Spaniards into the heart of the city. 
There, the Aztec ruler showered them with lavish gifts of gold and silver jewelry. He indulged them in the splendor of his ornate palace. And yet, within one week, Cortez repaid Montezuma's hospitality with betrayal. The Keys the Aztecus, Chapter 12, Verse 10. Never trust thy enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Never trust your enemy, man. You should have knew. Maybe that was lost, but they should have knew who their enemy was, man. And you never should have invited him in. He trusted him. And like iron rusteth, his wickedness did. And he betrayed him, you know. This is the Apocrypha, which is a part of the original King James Version 1611 Bible. If you don't read in the Apocrypha, you haven't read the whole Bible yet, man. It's a part of the Bible. It's a part of the original King James Version Bible that was translated. 1611. You know, a lot of different camps and stuff like that. You know, dudes that's so supposedly supposed to be in the truth. Oh, we don't read the Apocrypha. And now you see now towards the end, they starting to all get into the Apocrypha and read the Apocrypha. Because they know it's true, man. But they not coming out repenting. Now they want to go into the Apocrypha because they have to. They're getting desperate. But back then, when we was telling them, yeah, the Apocrypha, you have to read the Apocrypha, they were saying, no, we don't read that. That's not a part of the Bible. Man, come on, man. The Spaniard had his men shackle Montezuma in chains. Esau always trying, man, look, Esau always trying to lock somebody up, man. And that goes into the curses. You know, we had those, we, we shackled in iron, iron yokes, man. And it's a core in the Latin tribes war too, not just the um so-called Negro tribes, man. That's a cut on all you dudes talking about. No, nah, they don't go through what we go through. They're not Israelites. They are Israelites, man. Just do a little bit of research. They got temples, man. That's how Israel runs stuff, man. In November 1519, man. the Aztec ruler Montezuma was held a prisoner in chains in his own palace by Cortez and his men. That's the curses. Hungering for more gold, the Spanish found the royal treasury and looted it. Priceless ancient artifacts were melted down into gold bars. To the Aztecs, the Spaniards' frenzy of greed seemed absurd. They seized upon the gold as if they were monkeys. Clearly their thirst for gold was insatiable. They starved for it. They lusted for it. They wanted to stuff themselves with it as if they were pigs. Because that's the true money of the earth, man. And they know that that's the true wealth of the earth. And they was coming for that wealth, man. They wanted to steal everything. The Spaniards, so-called white man, which goes back to Esau Edom, man. The devils. How can you look at these people after all the things they did? This is just to the Aztec Empire. During the same time, they were taking down Gad and the Native Americans. Later on, because this is during the 1500s, later on, the so-called Negroes came over here. We all got the same thing in common. That's not by coincidence, man. That we were oppressed and took down by these devils. That's not by coincidence, man. But how can you say these are the chosen people of God with all the wickedness that they, everything they got has been, they have got by wickedness? Come on, man. You got to wake up out those doctrines. How can you say that these people are going to be saved? These people got judgment going all the way back to the 1500s, even before that. All of them. the Aztec accounts told to Father Bernard. And every Spaniard today benefit off these acts that their forefathers did. Therefore, they, they're going to have to pay for those acts that their forefather did, which goes back to um Isaiah 14. Read the chapter, man. They have to pay for the iniquities of their forefathers. Adino's Hagun, 1577. 
so their 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 descendants are guilty of it too, man. Part of the Spaniards' mission they benefit to off of the it. true faith of Catholicism. They saw the Aztecs' gods as devils and set out to destroy their idols. That's what I wanted. They shouldn't have been into idols, but even if they were following Yahweh Shai, they would have saw their god still as a devil. Yahweh Shai is a demon like power to them. Why? Because he's coming back to destroy them and they know that. But that but that's what I wanted right there. Here, let me see if I could go back real quick without fucking it up. Part of the Spaniards' mission had been to spread the true faith of Catholicism. They saw the Aztecs gods as devils and set up. That's what I wanted right there. And that's to all my Latino, Spanish brothers, my Mexican brothers. This is not just me talking. I lived, I literally lived in Mexico. My wife is, it's, it's, a, it's a car light. We lived in Mexico, man. I lived there. Across the border, I lived there, man. I've been all through the city. The city I was staying in, I've been all through. I met so many Mexicans. I kicked it with them, hung out with them, all that, man. They just like us, man, because we're all Israelites. We have the same spirit. And the thing is, is that's a message to my, my um, it's a Israelite brothers, man. Because most of them down there are Catholics. You know, you go to certain countries, they got a big statue of the Pope next to the mountain. They got, you know, all this Catholic stuff on it. Most Mexicans you know here in the United States are what? They're Catholics. But what did that say, man? The Spaniards came over here, man, and they gave you the whole Catholic thing. And then they said that the gods that your forefathers was um was worshiping, they said they were demons. So they said the God that you're worshiping is a demon. You need to um convert into being a Catholic. And to this day, y'all still are Catholics. And into all this idolatry. All you got to do is do a little research. So repent out of that, man. All you got to do is a little research, man, and repent out of that. That whole Catholic thing that y'all following, y'all got that from the so-called white man, the devil, Esau, Edom. And then they told y'all that y'all... Here, I'll play it one more time, man. ...been to spread the true faith of Catholicism. The true faith of... <laughs> they saw the Aztecs gods as devils and set out to destroy their idols. Cortez did try to throw down some of the idols. He demanded when he had Motecuzoma a prison. And pretty much, and, and, and that's the law of bringing Esau Edom against you to punish you because you shouldn't have idols in the first place, man. You know, so it was all prophesied. And then eventually after that, the Aztecs end up, you know, fighting back. And then um, they end up winning a couple battles. But eventually, um, these devils, they're so dirty, man. Which, why we got the coronavirus right now today? Because they're so dirty, man. Why we got all the diseases we got today? Because they're dirty people, man. They end up giving um, the Aztecs chicken pops. Ch either chicken pops or small pops. I know it sounds like the same story what happened to the Native Americans because it is. They did it to the Aztecs and the Native Americans, man. Chemical, um, this was biological, the biological warfare all the way back then in the 1500s, man. And then it made them weak. It made the Aztecs weak. And then what happened is once they became weak, because um, I think they said 80% of them died, man. That's a genocide. They came back and then they took them down, man. And then they, they took them down after that. The Spaniards came back and took them down. And that's why they speak Spanish to this day, man. And they follow they follow the white man's religion, which is Catholic. And they speak Spanish to this day. Because they were conquered by the Spaniards, man. Remove the two principal idols of the Templo Mayor, which was yeah, let me that never been go there, in the Valley of... On June 29th, 1520... With their temples desecrated and their emperor in chains, the Aztecs finally rebelled against the Spanish invaders. And they won. Out onto a balcony to calm the mob. And then they killed them. They but killed them. The subjects shouted that Motocazoma was a traitor. And then something very mysterious happened. <laughs> the Spaniards claimed that a rock did in fact impact Motocazoma's head. And didn't 
in fact fracture his skull. According to Cortez, Montecuzoma was then was not dead at the time. He was escorted back to his quarters, where he then received the holy sacrament from a friar and died in heavenly bliss as a true Christian. As it died as a true Christian. Man, come on, man. Now, what's the real story? The Aztecs, however, tell a dramatically different story. They insist that Cortez, seeing Montecuzoma was no longer of value, drew his dagger and drove it deep into the emperor's back. Was Cortez guilty of Montecuzoma's murder? Yes, man. And the Lord knows he's going to be punished for it. Of course the devil did that. You know, Rock hit the man and then he died as a true Christian. No, man. That man pulled out that dagger. Those Aztecs seen him do it, man. But, you know, like they say, whoever wins the war at the end writes the history books. So they wrote it the way they want it. And they lie, man. That's why we call them devils. Because devil means to be a deceiver, man. And what he did is he killed the man. He didn't need him anymore. That's what the devil do. But the Aztecs had won that little battle right there. They pushed them back. I'm trying to scroll up a little bit to get what I want. That right there. Sickness. A plague. Go back a little bit. The bloodiest defeat of their campaign. The Spanish left behind something far more lethal than the blades of their swords. Because they, they lost, but they left Small some behind. <laughs> There came to be prevalent a great sickness, a plague. Many died of it. No longer could they walk. Indeed, many people died and many just died of hunger. There was no one to take care of them. You're going to die of hunger because when everybody's sick, there's going to be nobody out there to put the work in, you know, to get the food and maintain and stuff and grow it because everybody's sick. So then comes a famine. Which is what people are going to see today here in America. People are sick. There's coronavirus going. Which is going to cause a famine. Because nobody's at work. And then you ain't got nobody to take care of them. That's going to happen here today. History repeats itself. The hospitals are going to be too packed. And you're not going to have nobody to take care of the other people that can't get in. Same thing man. That's, but it's going to come back around on these devils though. Another. There was no one to attend another. From the Aztec accounts, told to Father Bernardino de Sago, 1577. Over the next decade, 80% of the population of Central Mexico would die from the Spanish conquistador's deadly legacy. Woo! 80% from the northern border all the way down there to the southern border. 80%, man. Bro, when you get to saying shit like 80%, you might as well say 100%, man. It's over with. It's over with. 80% died from these. That's a complete genocide, man. Anyways, this is 2nd address um, 13. This is the account in the Bible to match up with all this. 2nd address chapter 13, how they got over here. Starting at verse 40. Those are the 10 tribes. Which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, who Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. So we know the um, northern kingdom, which were composed of the ten tribes, went into the Assyrian captivity. They got took down by the Assyrians and then they went to captivity. Verse 41. But he took this counsel among themselves, but they took this counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude of the heathen, go forth into a farther country where never man dwelt, the, mankind dwelt. So they said, look, we going to leave the heathen. No, we going we gonna to be one with the heathen, man. And we going to be, we going to go all the way to the kingdom being arm to arm and one with the heathen and mixing with the heathen. Like America mixes with all these different races. No, they said, look, we going to leave the heathen man and then they're gonna go forth they're gonna go forth to a country where never man dwelt where never mankind dealt that they might keep their statues which 
they never kept in their own land. So they were going to come to this place where man never has been, which are the Americas. That's why they're considered the first ones to come here to the Americas, right? And they were they were supposed to come here, keep the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And they entered to the Euphrates by the narrow uh, passage of the of the uh, river. So you know where the Euphrates is. This is when they they're coming. To, um, they're um, migrating. For the Most High then showed signs of them and held uh, still the flood till they were uh, passed over. For though that country there, so this is the country right that they're going to. They're they're migrating to this country. For though that country there was a great way to go, so they had a great way to go after you know they passed and all that stuff. Namely, a year and a half, a whole year and a half of traveling. Imagine that, a whole year and a half of traveling. In the same region, it's called Azareth. America, true name, is called Azareth, you know. Then dwelt they there into the latter time. And now when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of the uh, stream again, that they may go through. Therefore, solve thou the multitude with peace. But those that be left behind of thy people, or they that be found with within my borders, right? Uh, we were found, the Israelites, the two tribes, the southern kingdom, we were found in the borders. And then we went out and then we came to America by the slave trade. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of nations that are gathered together, he should defend his people that remain. Um, and then shall he show them great wonders. So this is talking about when the Lord comes back. But the point is, is like, when they got over there, they didn't, um, they didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, man. And because of that, the Lord sent these devils against them to take them down. He, um, he, um, after a while, the southern kingdom went out of Jerusalem. They did not stay there. They never came out of Jerusalem and went back. When the Israelites return back, it's going to be all 12 tribes, not just two tribes or one tribe, not just the Jews. It's going to be all, it's going to be the Jews and all of Israel, man. And then they went into the fields. They went into the mountains, which are, which is the Africa. And then after that, they spread it through Africa for some time. And then the devils came and got us through this uh, translated slave trade and bring us to America where the rest of the Israelites were at. And then that's where you get Jeremiah, fit, the 50th chapter. Um, the house of Israel and the house of Judah should be um, oppressed together. And we were oppressed together where? We're oppressed together here in America, man. And we're waiting to the very end for the Lord to come back and save us. You know, they came, it was all prophecy and it all had to happen because we were going off not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, man. But now that we're returning and we're getting this knowledge and we're returning to keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, the Lord about to come get us, you know, and take us all. That's in Revelations, the, um, the 12th chapter, you know. We start keeping the laws, the Lord come back, and he's going to save us, and they're going to fight against the Lord in the heaven, and they're going to be destroyed, and the Lord's going to deliver us and save the elect. Revelations, um, the seventh chapter, the elect, you know, and then you got Revelations, the 21st chapter tells you how it all, um, how it all went down. Uh, you see New Jerusalem coming down from the sky. Those are the ones that were saved. Who is New Jerusalem? Revelations 12, um, verse 21. Um, Revelations 21, verse 12 tells you the 12 gates are the 12 tribes of Israel, man. That's what the kingdom is prepared for, the 12 tribes of Israel, man. So I'm gonna leave it there though. You know, you just gotta do a little research. The um Aztecs, the so-called Mexican Empire, which are Israelites, you know, we all need to repent, man. And we need to follow these law, statutes, and commandments so our Lord could come get us out of the bondage and the oppression that we in. Salvation to the elect, shalom.